Hey guys, what's up? Trainer Mike here at the Bodybuilding.com corporate headquarters for your Flex Friday workout. And today we're working on arms, baby. That's right, there's not a lot of days that I, I designate exclusively for arm training, but this is gonna be one of those days because every now and again on a Friday, you gotta blast out some t-shirt muscles, right? Just swell up the arms a little bit before you go hit the nightclub or whatever it is for the weekend. So today we've got biceps and we've got triceps. And the cool thing is we're also throwing in some BFR or blood flow restriction training today as well. So towards the end of our workout, we're gonna go through some of that as well. Pretty quick and dirty workout, shouldn't take us too long. We're keeping the rest time pretty short here. We're going to blast it. So we've got you live today on Facebook, on Twitch, on YouTube. Welcome everybody that's checking it out. If you guys have questions, comment below. We'll do our best to answer those as we go. And also, for those of you on Facebook, make sure you like, comment, and share for your chance to win that $25 in-store credit. Pick yourself up something nice, some pre-workout, some aminos, maybe some clothes, whatever you'd like. You know the variety that we offer. So Today we're starting with alternating dumbbell curls for four sets of 10. We're gonna dive right into it. So we're already warmed up, we're ready to go. First set of 10. First set down, feeling pretty good, guys. I think we already have a question, so let's check that out. Uh, Juan from YouTube wants to know, what's the name of this gym? What's the name of this gym? This is the bodybuilding.com corporate headquarters. So this is actually where the offices are. All the magic that happens behind the scenes at bodybuilding.com happens right upstairs below to the side of this gym right here. So everybody, uh, everybody from uh, most, most people that, that are, work with bodybuilding.com work in this building. This is the headquarters in Boise, Idaho. So set one down, set two ready to go. Guys, that 40 was a little light. I gotta go up. We can't cheat ourselves here. We're gonna grab these 45s, head back over here for set two, 10 reps, alternating dumbbell curls. Let's roll. Nice and controlled, trying to rotate at the top as best as we can. Two, three, three, There it is, woo! Man, that's feeling good. All right, two sets down. I think we got another question. What's up? What is BFR or blood flow restriction training? What is BFR or blood flow restriction training? So that, it's also known as occlusion training. You may have heard it. And that's where we're actually restricting the blood flow to a certain area. The benefits of this are that it allows you to get more work done in a shorter period of time with less weight. So if you're in a hurry or you have joint issues, it can be a really great option for you as it just drives blood in there because the blood is able to pool in that muscle, providing it with a little more nutrients than it normally would and it kind of forces it um, to grow. So it can be a great option for you. Typically done at the end of a workout, so that's why we're gonna wait and do it at the end. So here we go. Set three, 45 pounds. Starting to feel a little pump. Starting to feel a little pump. Oh, don't zoom in yet. I'm, I didn't say I was ready for that. All right, here we go. Set three. Oh, lightweight. Ah. 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 Ah.
Now, you'll notice we start off with more of these movements where maybe go a little heavier. Um, yes, there's a little rocking, a little swaying there, and then we'll get a little more isolated as time goes on later down the workout. So moving more of our weight during our first couple exercises here. So we wanna know what you guys are training today too. Comment below, let us know what you're hitting. I think we have another question. With most exercises, we start with compound lifts. With arms, would it be beneficial to start with bilateral movements as opposed to unilateral? Bilateral as opposed to unilateral. You know, it's, um, here's the deal guys. I always recommend that you switch it up. Okay, and even with you know, isolated versus compound, some, most days we're gonna start with compound movements, some days you actually start isolated. For example, on legs, usually start with squats, maybe some days we'll start with a leg extension. You have to switch it up if you wanna promote that growth and continue to keep your body guessing there. So good question, honestly. I would say yes, it could be, but just make sure you switch it up. Last set, best set, we're gonna keep these 45s Forearms are starting to feel a little pump here. That's usually what gives out on these first, but we're gonna keep it here and get rowdy. I got a little hard, probably broke form just a little bit there at the end. When this gets hard, it's tough for me to fully supinate at the top or twist that, that arm. And that's okay, I'm not too concerned about it. We're doing our best here, but if I get seven quality reps and kind of have to force three more out, it's not the end of the world. It means we're pushing ourselves. that's a good thing. All right, so we're gonna move on here, but I think we got another question along the way. Great question. Raymond wants to know how many times a week you train arms. Depends. If you're looking to grow your arms, I recommend trying to work out like this two times per week, okay? Or what I like to do is I'll throw in a little biceps at the end of back, a little triceps at the end of chest, and then I'll specifically pick an arm day as well. So if you want to grow, twice a week. All right, guys, here we go. Decline dumbbell skull crushers next. We're going four sets of 10 here. Start with 40 pounds, see how that feels. That was pretty light, so we're definitely gonna move that weight up a little bit. On the dumbbell skull crushers here, the reason why we're doing it on a decline is because it allows us to get a better stretch on the triceps. When you're on a flat bench, you're not able to really move your shoulder back enough, but on a decline, you're able to get a better stretch, which means a better contraction on there as well. So, a little light, we'll move up to 45 next, but first, we got a question. Yeah, it's better to have a triceps day or train with biceps. Um, if you're, you don't need a whole day for triceps, okay? Don't make that mistake of picking a whole day for this tiny little muscle group, okay? So if you're going to work arms, work them together. But if you wanna throw triceps in at the end of a, another pressing day, that's fine as well. All right, 45 pounds, here we go. Yep, yep, like, wait. <sighs> Here we go, notice how we got a good stretch here, good contraction.
So we're trying not to let our elbows flare out there too. A lot of people when they do triceps extensions, they have a tendency to let their elbows flare out and we wanna try and keep them in so we can get a little better activation on that tricep. So feeling pretty good here, guys. Pump starting to hit us. I'm digging today. Uh, for new viewers, how often are you doing these live workouts? So we do these live workouts every Friday at about 10 a.m. Mountain Time, okay? So if you guys wanna check this out, we do this on Face, Facebook, we do this on Twitch, we're doing it on YouTube today, every Friday, 10 a.m. live. Believe it or not, this isn't recorded, right? This is real deal, live stuff. So here we go, third set, tricep extensions, 45 pounds, definitely felt better. Let's blow these pipes up, baby. One definitely got a little tough. We may drop down to 40s for the final set. Now here's the other thing, guys. If you have elbow pain when doing these typical overhead tricep extensions, like a lot of people do on like a flat bench, a lot of times moving it to a decline and letting that shoulder shift back a little bit can help take that pain away because you're not putting as much stress on that joint. So there we go, guys. Make sure you like, comment, share if you're on Facebook. Chance to win $25 in store credit. What are you drinking in between sets? What do I drink in Come on, guys. I can't share with you my special anabolic formula that I use during my work. No, I'm just kidding. So I'm always taking in at least five grams of leucine, okay, in my branched chain amino acids. So it's branched chain amino acids. I use the Dimatize BCA Complex 5050 Blue Raspberry, good flavor, and uh, two scoops of that to get five grams of leucine in there. Do I need it? Yeah, you know, maybe. Probably not for an arm day, but it helps me stay hydrated while I'm working out. So here we go, last set. 40 pounds going down so we can get a good contraction. Good stretch. feels good so here we go guys we got one set one exercise of biceps one exercise of triceps in starting to feel the blood flow coming now our reps start getting a little higher the pumps really gonna start hitting us so next up we're gonna move to an incline dumbbell curl and this one has um, for this one we're gonna go four sets of 12 on this guy here we go all right so for this guy, a good incline here, just so we're not straight up and down. Move the seat just a little bit. It's all about the stretch here. So you'll notice as we do this, we're going all the way down so we can get a better contraction at the top. Here we go, four sets of 12, first set. Let's make it happen. Big stretch, keep the hands supinated. Feels pretty light when you start out. This one gets hard in a hurry. Flex your triceps at the bottom to make sure you get that full stretch. There's our 12 right there. Little different feel than your regular alternating dumbbell curls. Uh, Marissa from YouTube said she had to turn the volume down. 
you know what? Marixa from YouTube, turning the volume down because of the grunting. There's no noise in here, right? They turn the music down, they boot everybody out. I'll be honest with you, it's lonely in here and it's quiet. And they don't let me wear headphones, so I gotta make some grunting, all right? Otherwise, I just feel like I'm not doing enough. Plus, scientifically proven that grunting during a set increases gains by 25%. Everybody knows that, so just turn the volume down. Sorry, not sorry. Set two. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Full stretch at the bottom. gotta leave your ego at the door on this one because it does not take much weight to get a killer pump in. 30 pounds, not a lot, but that's burning. What do we have next? This is from YouTube. Can women who do not want to get bigger biceps or triceps skip training them for a while as they are, cha or as they are working with chest and back? Or should we do at least one exercise, for example, for each one? So if you're a lady and you're not really wanting to grow your biceps and triceps, you know, can you get away with skipping? direct bicep and tricep work, absolutely, okay? You get secondary work done with your presses and with your pulls, so if it's not a big focus for you, honestly guys, arms aren't a huge focus for me as I look to just develop balance and symmetry. Some weeks I hit them, some weeks I don't, okay? I'd rather focus most of my energy on things like chest and on back training. So great question. I'm actually gonna go down 25 pounds, so I can make sure, whew, starting to come in guys. The pump is starting to get there. That's good. 25 pounds, set three, 12 reps. Let's roll. Ah, two, three, four, five. Again, 25 pounds is killing me. It doesn't take a lot of weight here. You don't need to, you don't need to load up with a ton for this exercise, guys. What do we have next? How often do you focus on negatives? How often do I focus on negatives? Great question. Um, you know, I'll go through phases of training where I focus a little more on negatives. But one thing you'll notice is as our exercises progress, I'm gonna put more attention on the negatives. So I'm doing a super heavy weight. It's just more about that concentric. But when we start getting lighter, I start focusing more on the negatives. But some days it's fun to just do an entire negative training day where you take like a four second negative on all movements, absolutely crushes you. So last set, the pump is starting to hit us. Hopefully you guys get a good pre-workout in before this workout. I expect all of you to go blast this workout today. Get a good pre-workout meal in, Good pre-workout drink and crush it. Here we go. Four more. Nine. Guys, yeah, that like falls into the categories of the likes of leg extensions and calves when it comes to burn. I mean, that's an exercise that can absolutely burn. So we'll take a look at what we have next. Moving on to our next tricep exercise. And for this one, we're going to rope tricep extensions for four sets of 12. So we're gonna move right on over here. 
Now for this exercise, they've got this fancy tool here. I really like it. Your gym may not have one, that's okay. It's not, it's not the bodybuilding.com corporate headquarters, right? So use a regular rope. Four sets of 12, really focusing on the squeeze here and a little more focus on the negative. Here we go. One, two. Trying to keep the elbows in the same spot the whole time. Four, good stretch at the top. Squeeze at the bottom. Eight. Nine. Ah. Ah. That felt pretty good right there. We got another question. What are some exercises that work the long head of the triceps? So exercises that work the long head of the triceps. Here's the deal, guys. You want to focus on both your overhead, which is going to help focus a lot on that long head of the triceps, and you want to focus a lot on just straight up pull downs, which is going to help hit the short head too. If you do both just regular press downs and overhead press downs, press ups, press downs, depending on where you're at, you're going to hit both the long head, short heads of the tricep and that's gonna lead to full arm development. So try to avoid just all presses or all overhead at that, and add that variety in there to make sure you hit all heads of the tricep. Trick question, how many heads of the tricep are there? Go ahead, post it up. So we have a troll comment. Troll comment, I love troll comments. Do I need a cool haircut like yours to get maximum gains? Well, here's the deal, guys. Do you need a cool haircut like mine to get maximum gains? Um, I, I feel like that's a pretty obvious answer. Um, no, however, it, uh, it helps a lot, right? It helps a lot, guys. Now, I put a lot of focus into this hair before I come in here, so volumize, blow dry, freeze spray it. Thank you for noticing. Here we go. 12. Ah, really squeezing it. Ah. 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 So that started off feeling really light. But because we were controlling our reps, getting a good squeeze at the bottom it actually started getting pretty hard around that rep eight and rep nine. It's funny, we were talking about that before we went live, just how that happens when you control your reps. It starts off feeling light and then you start progressing and it gets tough in a hurry. All right, what else we got? What consists of a good pre-workout meal? Ooh, good pre-workout meal. I'll tell you what I had. I make my own pancakes with an omelet this morning and that was pretty good. But uh, what, what consists of a good pre-workout meal you want carbs, okay? You gotta have carbs before you come in and train. For most people, guys, you're looking at about 50 grams is a pretty good pre-workout meal. Maybe a little more, maybe a little less. You want some protein, okay? So for most people, 25 to 40 grams of protein is gonna do. But here's the kicker, low fat, low fiber, okay? So we don't wanna have a whole bunch of bulk, like a big old bowl of broccoli and oatmeal before we come train, it's too much bulk. Something simple, like a white rice, white potatoes, hash browns, rice cakes, something like that, works a lot better. Here we go, set three. Ah. 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 Ah, feels good. Not a lot of weight, but we're making that weight work for us. Time to stay hydrated. Like, comment, share if you guys are on Facebook, your chance to win that $25 in-store credit. Can you explain <coughs> the difference between rest pause sets and drop sets and their purpose? So rest pause sets and drop sets, what's the difference in their purpose? Um, they're good to include at the end of a workout. 
drop set. So rest, pause would be where you typically keep the same weight. Okay, so you would do a set, stop after your set, pause for typically like five to 10 seconds, and then go again on the same weight. Whereas a drop set, you're typically gonna decrease the weight each time and try and burn out. It's a good like failure technique to use at the end. Good question. Last set. You guys will feel the triceps squeeze on this one. Oh, very good. That wraps up that exercise. And now we get to move on to our next biceps exercise, which now we get to start having some fun with some BFR work. So we'll move on over to that. Do we have a question first? How do I get my arms to be more vascular? Arms to be more vascular. First key to vascularity is you have to be lean, okay? If you're not lean, the veins just don't show. So that's step one. Once you're lean, you want vascular arms, hydration, well hydrated, and sodium. A lot of people forget about the salt, so I added a ton of salt to my pre-workout meal as that's gonna help act as like a driver for some of that water into the cells. So moving on to BFR, I just use these medical turn kits here. Okay, pretty simple uh, tool, does the trick. So for these, we just simply hook them in. And the key here, guys, is you want it tight enough to restrict blood flow, but it shouldn't absolutely kill you. So I'm gonna put them up right under the deltoid there. And then we're gonna start off first sets, 20 reps. And then we give just 30 seconds rest, 10 reps, 30 seconds rest, 10 reps, 30 seconds rest, 10 reps. And we're never taking the straps off in between those. So we keep them on the whole time. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten them up. And this can help with vascularity too. We can start having some fun with this one. All right, 20 reps. Weight's gonna be pretty light. Uh, we may even go a little lighter than that. Let's go a little lighter. 20 reps is a lot. You're not gonna do as much weight as you normally do here. The key with blood flow restriction training is you actually do less weight and accomplish more. 20 reps. Now the blood's starting to pool. We're watching the timers, 30 seconds strict here. So for this one, I'm going up a little bit because now we're going sets of 10 here. The blood's starting to pool. Veins will start coming out. You're gonna get a little uncomfortable here. That's okay, that's normal. You can adjust the tightness just a little bit if you need to, but don't take the straps off in between those. 30 seconds is up. Time for our next set of 10. Thirty seconds on the clock again. Two more sets, guys. You're gonna, you're gonna like this if you've never done blood flow restriction training before. It feels a little different. Might freak you out a little bit at first, but uh, it's good. It's a good technique to throw in there. So we're on the clock now. Thirty seconds. Staying hydrated. Staying rocking and rolling for these. So we have a few new people tuning in. They want to know what the straps are for. So the blood flow restriction straps. Again, it allows you to accomplish a little more work in less period of time. So they actually allow the blood to pool in there, which is gonna help volumize the cells, can help with growth. Some good research behind blood flow restriction or occlusion training. So, all right, next set of 10. Ah, two, three, four, five, 
All right, 30 seconds on the clock. We got time for another question. Jared from Facebook asks, why are you alternating between biceps and triceps exercises? It's a good, it's a good question. Why alternate between biceps and triceps? I like it because otherwise my forearms get too pumped if I just do full biceps exercise. So it gives enough of a break to where I can let that pump go, re regain my grip before I come back and hit biceps again. But it also keeps it quick enough to where I'm not losing the pump on one or the other. Good question, but it depends. Some days, like I said, I'll throw it in at the end of a back or, or chest workout, and in that case, I'm not alternating. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five. Ah. Feel the gains, baby. So I'm taking them off now. Yowzers, we're starting to get a lot of blood flow in the arms. The pump is coming, vascularity is coming. We're staying hydrated here. So now it's time to move on to triceps. We're gonna do the same rep set range there, but we're heading over here to machine dips to do this one. So we're gonna start off, first exercise, first set. 20 reps and then move 10, 10, 10, 30 second break in between. Oh yeah? Cameraman's getting props for the zooms. It, uh, you know, when you guys start talking about my hair, well, if they're gonna be zooming in all tight on me, I better make sure my hair looks tight, right? These are high def cameras we use here. We don't mess around. All right, so now we've had a chance to let those arms Regain a little more of that oxygen. Tighten the straps back up. Get ready for triceps. Where can you get those blood flow restriction straps? Guys, honestly, I get these just medical turn kits off eBay. They're like four bucks, okay? So pretty simple tool. There's more fancy ones, but I actually like these ones the best. All right, 20 reps. <sighs> 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 Oh, Whew, 30 seconds on the clock, then we're hitting our three sets of 10. Gonna go up just a little bit here, throw that 25 back on. Blood's starting to pool. We're feeling the arms get real swole here, guys. It's good, you know, obviously you're not gonna keep that pump all the time, but it actually does help with overall growth. What exercises are best for forearm growth? Best exercises for forearm growth, uh, deadlifts, okay? Uh, even bicep work without using wrist straps is super helpful. I can't remember the last time I did direct forearm work. I feel like they get enough work through other things. If you really wanted to focus on some arm curls, you could, but to me, it's just kind of a waste of time. Here we go, set of 10. Oh, 30 seconds. On the clock, we're starting to feel this. Man, these suckers burn, guys. You know, pay attention to it if you start getting lightheaded or purple arms or something. Yeah, take them off, loosen them up. But uh, for right now, we feel pretty good. I've done this enough to where I feel like I have a pretty good idea how tight these need to be so they're not too tight. But uh, we still get the right amount of pump from it. So whew, a few more seconds and we bash out our next set. This is where it starts, this is where it starts getting tough. I mean, this burn hits you, it hits you good. Let's go. Whew. We got a question. When's the best time to take protein shakes? 
best time to take protein shakes, absolutely without a doubt. You should be taking in 25 to 40 grams of whey isolate after a workout, okay? Best time to take it. Um, also works good before a workout um, as well, and just as you need to to replace meals throughout the day. They want to know, are you bulking, cutting, maintaining? That's a good question. I don't know what I'm doing. Guys, I, I used to go through bulking, cutting phases, but because of some of the obligations that I have now, um, I, I, try to, I try to maintain a little more. So I'm, I'm actually looking to maintain where I'm at right now. Believe it or not, I've spent 10 years of bulking and cutting. Now I'm just trying to kind of maintain where I'm at, stay in shape. Sometimes we get two days notice before a photo shoot, and I, I, I can't afford to be out of shape for those. So it's kind of in a maintenance phase right now. <laughs> Yes, take the straps off, allow us to get a little more oxygen back in there before we head on to our next exercise, which is right next door. How often do I use the turn kits? You know, it, it's good. What I would recommend, if you guys want to see growth in your arms, maybe spend like four weeks where you do the blood flow restriction one to two times per week with at least 72 hours rest in between. All right. Now, we're actually going to go 30 reps for our first set and then go 15, 15, 15. So, real lightweight here. And this is meant to just really drive a ton of blood flow into the muscles. So I hope you guys appreciate the hickeys that I'm giving myself on my arms here as we go through this BFR training. And it does. I usually wear a t-shirt when I do this, but I felt like that would just be a sin to put a t-shirt on for you guys on Flex Friday Arm Day. So here we go. All right, cameraman, show those skills on these guns here. Make them look bigger than they are. sucks but that's what you got to do this is the kind of stuff it takes to grow some arms here guys vascularity coming in big time we're starting to force a lot of blood flow it's feeling good right there any advice for older bodybuilders i'm 65 and it's hard to build lean muscle hey so older bodybuilder 65 wants to build lean muscle try the BFR training because this is, this allows you to do less weights and get the same benefits as heavier weights. So it's a little easier on the joints and things. Um, boom. Sorry, I got distracted there. My arms feel like they're gonna pop. That's good. All right, 15. Uh, yeah, hey, or, uh, uh, hey, uh, Nine. It's not pretty, but we're making it happen. What else we got? Uh, Bear from Twitch wants to know what do you do for a job? What do I do for a job? Well, I wish Flex Friday was my only job, but uh, it's not. No, actually, so I, I uh, manage, I'm an area director of fitness for a local chain of health clubs here in the Treasure Valley, Boise, Idaho. They're called Axiom Fitness, uh, Idaho's premier fitness facility. So I, I oversee the personal training department for all four of our locations. We have about 27,000 members. It's a dream job. Love it. So that's my full time. This is my fun time. Here we go. 15. <sighs> Oh, that was 
those are pretty pathetic reps. We gotta go down. We gotta go down for our last set. Take the 35s off. We're gonna move on to 25s and finish out our biceps. Last biceps exercise here. So we gotta give it all we got, trying to stick to that 30 seconds rest here. Any longer and we might pass out. We don't want that. Although it would make for a pretty good first impression on the YouTube Live. Here we go, 15. Tricep kickbacks are our last exercise. And these arms are toast. Whew. Do you believe in overtraining? Do I believe in overtraining? Uh, the short answer is no. I just believe in undereating and undersleeping. So if you, uh, if you eat enough and well enough and you sleep enough, I think it's very, very hard to overtrain. Um, but you know, in all seriousness, it can happen. It can happen, but I think you have to try pretty dang hard if you're fed enough. And if you sleep enough. Guys, go on to eBay or Amazon and search for medical turn kits, and these guys will pop up. Literally four or five bucks, okay? Not expensive at all, and they definitely do the trick. There's nicer ones, there's actual BFR straps. Um, they're gonna cost you a little bit more, might be a little more convenient, but these little guys just clip right in. And that tightens it here. So they use it in the medical setting when they're trying to draw blood on people and they need to try and get those veins to pop out a little more. I don't know. You think if I had to go in and get some blood taken, they'd have any trouble finding a place to do it? Ah. Maybe that's why I have the turn kits. I don't know. We have somebody from Cuna, Idaho watching. They want to know if you know Nate Hawk. Nate Hawk? Name sounds familiar. Thanks for tuning in, Cuna. Um, sounds familiar. Might but be a trainer at yeah, no, no, definitely not an Nathoff trainer there. But um, sounds familiar. I'm not good with faces, guys. I can I can remember names, but names and faces together, that's a lot. Okay, tricep kickbacks here. Four sets. Start with the first one, 30. Again, yay. All right, here we go. Let's try 20 pounds. See if we can manage that can already tell it's probably more than I should have picked. Hot dog! Whew, a little lightheaded. Why are you doing such high reps? Such high reps. With BFR training, you have to drive a lot of blood into the muscle. And the best way to drive blood into the muscle is to go with those higher reps. So for BFR training, you're always at minimum of 10 reps, okay? And uh, you, you go up as high as 30, maybe even 40 reps for the BFR training. Good question, though. So starting. You know, let's get to that point, guys. You ever been there where you're like so pumped, you like lose all definition in your arm? Yeah, we're kind of there. Kind of fun, but kind of like seeing the cuts too. All right, 15, here we go. Uh, one. This is silly. Silly. Do, do I even do cardio? Um, I don't know where you're going with that. Do I look like I do cardio? 
I don't know if I should or if I shouldn't. No, uh, yeah, I do cardio, absolutely. When I'm cutting, I'll do you know anywhere between 20 minutes and an hour a day. Right now, maintaining. I try and get up in the morning and do some moderate cardio after I hit some branch chain aminos um, four or five times a week for about 20 minutes. And this time of year, I love hiking. I get out, I'll go hiking three or four times a week. Nothing too intense, too structured right now because I keep my diet under control. But uh, if I start eating a little more than I should, I do a little more cardio. Okay, here we go, third set. One, two, three, four. Uh, 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 eight, nine, ten, grow, baby. Ah, 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 ah. Oh, man, I'm putting myself through some pain today for you guys, but it's uh, it's coming in. I'm starting to get just veins that you don't normally see when you do blood flow restriction training. Kind of fun. Teenager just starting out lifting, guys, consistency, okay? It's not about being good two or three days a week. You gotta be good seven days a week. And the other thing is, I mean, it comes down to, to your nutrition, has to be spot on. The mistake I made is I was trying to gain muscle on 1,500 calories a day as a soccer player in high school. It doesn't work that way. You have to eat, log your food, track your food, consistently get enough protein in, and over time, you'll start seeing results. But patience, you gotta be patient. Last set. All right, guys, we got a special treat today. Workout's done. I want you guys to follow me. We've got a new wall here at bodybuilding.com specifically designed for flexing. Now let me ask you this. How many of y'alls have a place at work where you are encouraged to go take a Swolfi? You probably don't, but over here at bodybuilding.com, we do. What's up guys? So, we head out here and this is called the BBCom Flex Wall, okay? So we're gonna put our stuff down. Appreciate you guys tuning in on Facebook, on Twitch, on YouTube. You guys rock. BBCom Flex Wall, BFR day. It's done, here we go. Boom, 